Hello, we've been very busy for the last few months working on the next generation of MindMap. Here's a quick preview of some of the really nice features you can look forward to in MindMap 2.0. First of all, we're making it much, much easier to work with MindMap. Straight from the start, our mission was to provide zero friction mind mapping with lightning fast idea capture. Over the last few years though, our users' devices and usage patterns have changed significantly. So we decided to revamp the UI completely and bring it up to date. The new mind map interface is much more touch friendly with big buttons and simpler access to key features. The context menu, for example, that you can show by right clicking on the touchpad or mouse or long pressing a node on a touch device is no longer like a desktop menu. It has big clear buttons that are impossible to miss. The old menu sometimes caused people to accidentally choose the wrong function like deleting nodes, but this one will be much easier to use. Likewise, the link editor pop-up menu is much simpler and clearer and also has these big buttons. The color picker, which previously looked quite small and was not that easy to use, is now much nicer and simpler. Also, we've added an option that a lot of you have asked for, removing the background and going back to the default color. The other big user interface change that you'll notice immediately is the new toolbar. Instead of the floating toolbar that was taking too much space so people had to move it around, we now have a horizontal top bar with all the key options that's much easier to get started with. We've redone all the icons completely to make it more obvious what they do and grouped the common operations together. This means that the experienced users will be able to quickly find all the key features, but if you share a map with someone who's never used MindMap before, this will make it easier for them to get started as well. For power users, of course, all the keyboard shortcuts you used to are still there. And if you work on a smaller screen, it's quite easy to collapse the menus and just show the toolbar so you can get more out of your screen space. Over the last few years, it seems that the large majority of mind map users preferred saving things to Google Drive. So we've made better Google Drive integration a priority for 2.0. In fact, the first release of MindMap 2.0 actually only works with Google Drive and will support other storage systems a bit later. So if you're using Google Drive with MindMap, there's lots and lots of really nice things for you in this release. For example, the entire menu structure and the organization of things on the screen is now adjusted to what people who use Google Apps are used to. This means that it's going to be a lot more intuitive for people to get started. And if, for example, if you're a teacher introducing MindMap to your class, you'll have a lot less explaining to do. One major change that lots of people have been asking for is supporting multiple Google accounts logged in at the same time. If you have a private Gmail and a work email on Google Apps, it was a bit difficult to select which one gets used for MindMap previously. No longer. We clearly show the currently logged in account and make it trivially easy to switch accounts so you can be sure what goes where. Even better, if you create your open files directly from the Drive web app, we'll automatically guess the correct account. Plus, maps are now auto-saved by default. So no more forgetting to save, no more lost updates. Although auto-saving was possible in the previous version, it had to be specially enabled. Now it's just there. MindMap also now supports all the typical Google Drive workflows easier. Map names were previously tied to the central node text, which was confusing to some users. Now that's no longer the case. You can name the maps anything you like, and the name is clearly shown in the top left corner. You can also easily rename files by typing in a new file name in the top left box, very similar to Google Docs or Google Spreadsheets. You can copy and move files directly from the app and put them in any folder on Google Drive. You can also create maps inside the folder. Previously, mind maps were always saved in the root folder, which was confusing for some users. You can now create a mind map inside any Google Drive folder, and even better, it will automatically inherit the sharing permissions from the folder. So, if you work with a team and the entire folder is already shared, there's nothing you need to do specifically to allow access to your maps. Finally, to make it easier to know what you're working with, MindMap now shows previews as thumbnail pictures in Google Drive. So it's easier to spot maps and it's easier for people that you share maps with to know what you're sharing, even before they set up MindMap. The second major change in terms of sharing is that Google stored maps are now much, much easier to give to new users. Previously, if you wanted to share the map with somebody who never used MindMap before, just sharing the web link didn't really work. MindMap would try to load the file and reject it because you didn't allow file permissions and the error message wasn't really that helpful to new users. Now, we'll show a nice page guiding the new users how to ask for access. So just go ahead and send the links. We're also making it much, much easier to collaborate on maps in real time. 
Previously, if you wanted to set up a real-time collaboration with other people so you don't end up overwriting each other's updates, you had to enable an extension, your colleagues had to enable an extension, and it was all a bit of a mess. Now, all this works out of the box. No more extension, no more setup, just load them up and start collaborating. The other thing that we've really done here to improve how you use MindMap is make it much more powerful to link to other documents. Mind maps are really good for planning, but they aren't the best format to hold all the information together. We know that our users need to be able to add links to other documents, so we've made that a lot better. Previously, it was possible to do a bit of rich text editing and add a link to an external file, but now we're making it much easier and much more effective. You can attach any Google Drive file to a node and we'll even show a preview when you open it. So that means you can add PDFs, you can add spreadsheets, you can add documents, you can also upload your own documents as part of the process to Google Drive, and even better, you can add videos to your nodes so they can sing and dance. Likewise, we've integrated with Google Photos for images. So you can now, for example, just snap a photo using your mobile phone, and as long as you have Google Photo Sync enabled, it will show up as an option to insert in your mind map on the desktop computer immediately. You can also select any images from your Google Photos albums, or take a snap even from a desktop computer with a camera. We have also completely redesigned the way we include other files in order to enable you to get the most out of your drive space allowance. Google Drive generally limits external collaborative documents to only about 10 megabytes. Previously, we would include all the images and attachments into the map, which meant that you could only use a few pictures in the map and reach that limit. We've now redesigned this, so we're actually just including the links to Drive documents and photos, so you can get a lot more space to add documents and things like that to your maps.